Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome world-class drummer, educator, author, founder, and artistic director of the Amelia Island Jazz Festival, and leader of the Les DeMurl Band, the dynamic Les DeMurl. Good afternoon. How's everybody feeling? All right. In the mood. <laughs> of course. Who said in the mood? You said it right there. Okay. First, well, you're putting me in the mood right here. I'll tell you. First of all, I want to thank everyone for making the first lecture so exciting and coming up to me at various times during the cruise in the Rendezvous Lounge and in the big band night that we hosted in the Rendezvous Lounge and just letting you know how much you have enjoyed the first lecture, which I'm going to do an overview of right now. Can I ask uh, how many people in the audience have, were at the first lecture? Can I get a hand raise? Okay. And now just how many people were not at the first lecture? Okay. So that <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little overview, uh, just real briefly, of what we did at the first lecture, and then uh, tell you what we're going to cover today. It's going to be a lot of fun. I guarantee we're going to have a lot of fun this afternoon. First, I gave a little bit about my background, starting in New York City, and for the folks who might not have heard this, uh, being a, a, a musician, of course, and my name is Les, and my father's name was Les also. His real name is Lester. My dad was a plumber, and I'm a drummer, so when my mother used to answer the phone, she used to say, you want the plumber or the drummer? You know? <laughs> so, and you know, then we, we, we basically got into music and I started to uh, tour and work with Lionel Hampton and the great Harry James, but I got my beginnings uh, when on TV shows in New York and Philadelphia. Uh, one very famous show called The Mike Douglas Show, and in the first uh, show, uh, lecture, I showed a shot of me giving a drum lesson to Rosemary Clooney Catherine Crosby and Mike Douglas himself, and that was a spontaneous kind of uh, a thing that came up out of that show. And uh, this show had been missing for many years, and the people that have Inside Edition had contacted me, and I got access to that tape. So I use that now in my lecture. Um, how many people have been in the Rendezvous Lounge lounge with us nightly, dancing to the music? Can I get a hand raise? All right, that's great. And, and what? I'm sorry. <laughs> Not dancing, but listening. Well, we, we want to, I want to tell you that the audiences on this contract for Celebrity have just been fabulous. The, uh, you know, the listening and the dancing has just been a joy for us to present. Uh, were many people there the other night when I did the big band, when I had the four horns with us? Yeah, good. Okay, well, you know, we played In the Mood and we played String of Pearls and some of the classics. And speaking of In the Mood, since you brought that up, of course, uh, this video that we open with is an overview of uh, the way my big band sounds today. So I'm one of the few leaders out there with a full 17-piece orchestra organized that does jazz festivals, big band theme cruises, uh, a lot of what we call clinics where we go into colleges and work with the college musicians. And uh, I'm out there with a the full big band several months of the year. So I'm very blessed to be able to do that. And one of my friends here at alto saxophone, right? that we talked the last time. I know you're gonna have some questions for me, I hope later. <laughs> and uh, so so many uh, many of the musicians that are on board and people that are affiliated with music have said to me, like, Les, uh, you know, how is it today to have a big band? Well, first of all, just to overview that, a big band, the way you hear this orchestra, my big band, is five saxophones, three or four trombones, four trumpets, bass, piano, and drums, and sometimes I use guitar in the rhythm way, that the same way the great Count Basie used it with Freddie Green. Uh, but that is the full big band sound, and that is the way that most bands work, like Benny Goodman, uh, Gene Krupa's band, Basie, Ellington, Stan Kenton. Of course, Stan Kenton had a larger band, if, if the musicians in the audience. Stan Kenton sometimes used five brass, in five trumpets, five trombones, five or six saxophones, sometimes two baritone saxophones, and uh, a very large sound. Uh, there was a great joke that uh, Shelly Mann, fa famous jazz drummer, anybody ever hear, heard, heard of Shelly Mann? Okay, I'll tell you a story that Shelly told me real quick about Stan Kenton's band. The band was very, very heavy and hard for a drummer to move. So uh, he, Stan Kenton had a special symbol, and he said, 
Miss Jelly, when the band starts swinging, I want you to go over to that cymbal and play that cymbal. So about four nights go by and he doesn't touch that one cymbal. So finally Stan gets real bugged and he goes over to Shelly Mann and he says, Shelly, I told you when the band starts swinging, I want you to play that cymbal. He says, Stan, do me a favor. When this band starts swinging, point to me. <laughs> Because it was like a heavy band to swing, you know. You, get, you have to get like 16 or 17 musicians on the same page, meaning they've got to feel the chord in them. Everybody's got to be right on that pulse to make it swing, you know. It's just like a good dance partner, you know. If you have a dance partner and one of the, one of the partners isn't right in sync with the other guy, it's not going to be as, as easy as it is if, if you're in sync, like you guys are in sync every night. Right, Reggie? You got it down. How many years have you been practicing that dance though? <laughs> He's looking at me like, don't ask, you'll get me in trouble here. These, these beautiful people are celebrating their 60th anniversary, correct? And how about a big round of applause for them? And their favorite song is The Nearness of You. And they've come up and they've requested that. And we must have played it about three times for you. We'll still squeeze it in one more time before the end of the cruise. And speaking of the musicians, ladies and gentlemen, as I'm looking around the room, this is really far out, guys. I have Kevin Wilder in this, in this entrance and Bill McCrossin over here. And that's what happens when you make guys roommates. They get a, as far away from each other as they possibly can. See? They, if you see him on the port side, he'll be on the starboard side of the ship. That's it. <laughs> anyway, that's my band. And how about a round of applause for Kevin Wilder? <laughs> Wonderful piano player. Thanks, Jeff, for coming. Bill McCrossin. Bill McCrossin over there, my wonderful bassist. And of course, we're working in the tech booth and introducing me, my beautiful and talented wife and partner, Bonnie Eisel, back there in the booth today. Bonnie. Well now, uh, speaking of, of great singers, um, when I showed the, the, the DVD of the Mike Douglas show, I left out in my first lecture the way the show closed. And I'd like to begin my lecture with the DVD presentation of showing you a very interesting thing happened that happened on the closing of the show. Again, for the, for the new uh, folks that are here, uh, I played a tune called Once in a Lifetime in its entirety in the first lecture, so I won't repeat that song. But that TV show finished with a little format that later became very popular in the United States for uh, Johnny Carson and uh, Steve Allen used that concept. David Letterman today uses the concept. Jay Leno uses the concept. And uh, did you want to sing a song? <laughs> Swing it? Big Ben? Okay, it's okay. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, what it was was he had, um, at the end of the show, he had four stools set up, kind of like bar stools. And each of the headlining artists sat on a stool. And most of the time they were singers or comedians. So myself, in those days, being a drummer, this is way before I started singing, too, by the way. I didn't sing. He had me on a stool sitting at the end, end here next to Rosemary Clooney. And Rosemary Clooney is singing a tune called Taking a Chance on, on Love, which is a beautiful song. So because I have my drumsticks in my hand on the show, I thought I'm playing on my leg, and you'll see a close-up of just tapping on my leg with the drumsticks. But then I realize I'm sitting on a stool, and if I take my sticks and go up and down the, uh, the, the, the rudders, the rung of the uh, stool, the rung, then, then I can make some sound, you know, playing on the stool itself. So what I do is, during Rosie's vocal, I kind of upstage her. Now Mike Douglas looks over and he's loving it. So he grabs another stool and he slides a stool down. And then he grabs a chair from the audience. And by the time Rosie gets to her final eight bars, I've got almost like a whole drum set of chairs and stools over here, you know. So we're gonna start that by showing you the way that show end. And if they're ready in the back there, we can play it right now. So here is the Mike Douglas show, the way it closed, and you'll see this routine. Okay, Rosemary Clooney, yours truly on stool. <laughs> a lot easier to transport than drums, I'll tell you that. Little volumes? Little volume? <laughs> That's Rosemary Clooney, ladies and gentlemen. Honest, no gum, yeah. Here I go again. I hear those trumpets blow again. You can hear the sticks in the background. All glow again, taking a chance on love. Here I slide again. 
about to take that ride again Starry-eyed again Taking a chance on love Here he goes again. Thank you. I see my mother in the audience over there somewhere. You know. <laughs> Just kidding. What do you think? Is that funny? That's pretty wild, isn't it? <laughs> and that's that kind of spontaneous move that comes up in music, you know, and I, I love that. I think that's what makes my night. There's not any two nights, I promise you, that you'll hear my band in the Rendezvous Lounge where you hear the exact same set. Because, first of all, we take as many requests as we can. Last night we went into a little different direction with some Motown music, you know, just to change it up. And that's, that's part of the, the uh, way we keep the band fresh. And these are the tools that I use today that I learned from these experiences as a, as a kid, basically, you know. So now, from this Mike Douglas experience for our new friends, I was able to get the job with Harry James. And uh, a lot of people ask me about Harry James because of Betty Grable. And they say, Les, was Harry really a ladies' man? Oh my God, was he a ladies' man. He had a black book of blondes and Italian restaurants. <laughs> Sometimes he'd get them mixed up. He'd call for pizza and he'd get a he'd model, you know. <laughs> but uh, I used to do something with Harry James that I'd like to tell you. The band and the, the guys in the, the band, the side men, would break up about. Sometimes we'd be in hotels and he had so many love affairs, you know, all over the country that uh, he'd be sitting down in the lobby very early reading a New York Times and I'd, I'd see him by himself, and just to break up the band, I would find a little kid, and I'd say, hey kid, I'm gonna give you five bucks. I want you to go over to that man and yell, Daddy. 